Good evening and welcome to this edition of Artists Alive. I'm Julie Starkey. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Yuba Sutter Regional Arts Council and I'm here to produce this program with Comcast Cable and we are introducing you today to one of our artists, Philip Shortino. Philip, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to see you again. See you again. It's been a <laughs> while, but I have never been to your studio and here we are right where all the things happen. So we want to go over a few of your pieces mm -hmm. and have you tell us how that happens mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But first, if you would tell our viewers, how long have you been an artist and been doing the sculpture? Hmm. My goodness, I've been an, uh, an artist for a very long time. <laughs> you know, I'm 60 You're so now. young, though. I'm, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm 60. I went to an art institute when I was 18. Um, I experimented uh, with some other forms of art, dancing, and filmmaking, was real excited about that. And uh, came back to sculpture probably in about 1972, frustrated with the complications of dealing with lots of people in the filmmaking thing. In fact, I was just telling my wife the other day um, that, my goodness, with all the complications of casting bronzes, I said, you know, I wanted to be a sculptor because I thought I was going to be able to, to be utterly independent. Now I have a whole cast of characters in a foundry. Marble sculpture, I was just me and marble. So suddenly now I'm involved with a, a big group of other people. But recently, and I'll show you a casting or two castings um, in a little while that came from Southern California, a very nice foundry. Okay, well that's interesting. Well, let's start with this first piece that we have here. This is a model, as you explained earlier. This is uh, going to go into the light rail station in, in Folsom, their historic station, in uh, around 2005, and it'll be about six and a half feet tall. Um, they chose me because I'm a representational sculptor, and they wanted the sculpture in um, uh, uh, Folsom to be representational. So there are so many processes. The people in Folsom are so extremely involved in their community. Everybody had something to say. It was, I made a lot of trips over there. Um, it didn't always look the way it did. Initially, uh, there was Theodore Judah, his wife Anna. It was a pleasure to put Anna in this, in this process. He's the man who's responsible for bringing this locomotive to Folsom in 19, or 1850 when the first um, steam engine uh, this side of the Rocky Mountains appeared. And now light rail will be returning to Folsom once again. How great. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. So this will be at the historic station. Yes. Beautiful. I, late notice was that I didn't have an Asian represented, and I was remiss in that. So when I included the Asian, this fellow up here, I put that in, all of a sudden there appeared to be, um, if, if I can point, uh, a, a, a little bit of a, um, uh, a clique of individuals here. So I added this black man, and the town of Folsom was founded on a uh, uh, Negro bar. Right. So it was, it, was, uh, it was made sense to put this black person in, not to be called at the last moment for not doing that. And then I added this uh, Native American because there was a, 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 an empty space here of, of activity. And the Native Americans, I heard, had already rejected a, a representation in a large mural in Folsom. And so there was thought that they didn't want to be part of any public art again. So I had to wait a long time. And finally, there was no objection with the Native American. So I'm so happy because I love this little vignette of the spear fisherman. And then down here, south of the border, at the bottom of this sculpture, there was a dearth of activity. There existed this wheel. It's not a wagon wheel. It's off of the. It's, it's under this trestle, and it's a it's a train drive wheel. And I love those drive wheels. And I didn't include it up here. So I just well, I'll just put it down here, just as a design concept. So I added this lion. And if you look carefully, there's a deer poking its nose through those uh, <laughs> spokes, hiding from the lion. And I think it's going to get away. So. If this it doesn't is, get run over by the train. Or, or nothing else <laughs> or falls all these on it. Spears. It looks dangerous here. And who's this character? Um, the, 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 I, he's pretty much a, 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 man, a horse 
uh, I saw this guy charging through Folsom in its wild days and just rearing up in his horse and saying, howdy, folks. But everybody, <laughs> everybody refers to him as a Pony Express rider, so I guess that's what that's he what is. That's what I was thinking, uh -huh. too. Yeah. And of course, this is the Sierra Mountains, which I dearly love. And the this, this sculptures meant a lot to me. When we moved up here 30 years ago, I used to get a feeling, traveling home, of, of all the things that happened. We came here from San Francisco, and I just got lost, both of us, my wife and myself, in the lore of the 49ers, etc. Oh, yeah. But over time now, I've kind of lost a lot of that, but when I did this, I revisited all of that, and I got involved in all that ambiance again, it was, and, and it's made me feel good. So I can't wait to make the big one. I can't wait to see it. That'll be great. Now we have another little sculpture here uh -huh. while we're at uh -huh. it. This is Frank and Carol Dreisbach. Frank and Carol. Uh huh. They're, these are um, our, the, our local lord and lady of the, the, the big, big landowners up here, and they've known about me for a long time. And after I made really everything changed with Dan Logue and the War Memorial in Marysville, right. and I suddenly now I've got all of this work is just avalanched. I've always felt as in order to make a, a public monument, I would have need to have made one. And how do how do I do that? Well, it, it all became possible after the uh, the War Memorials. And one day in a local store, I ran into this man to Frank his man son now deceased Frank and Carol and Frank said can you make people look like they like they are and I said sure or not <laughs> I say yes to everything and uh, so he asked me after a while if I would make them full size and they'll go at the head of their little lake they have a pretty little lake not far from here and and Frank and Carol this is in their younger days in fact newlyweds I think will go at the head of their lake in a, in a real pretty little grassy place. It's charming. Mm -hmm. Probably about 2000, early part of 2006. Uh huh. Great. Okay. Now we're going to look at a big piece here and see what we have. This is. Uh, this is going to go to Dallas, Texas. Oh wow! I must say it's been a very difficult piece to make. Um, uh, all the all the the edges are are have to be so precise. There just can't be any d noticeable irregularities. Unlike the clay sculptures that you've seen so far, there's just, if they are they are built on irregularities, which is pretty much how nature designs itself. But occasionally nature makes things like this too, with crystal structures particularly. And I did think about crystal structures when I made this. But this goes to a man named Philip Romano, the, the, the creator of Fuddruckers, okay. Romano's Macaroni Grill. And he lives in Dallas, Texas. And uh, little by little, I came up with a concept for him. We sat in a restaurant in San Francisco, me and my whole family and the Romanos and his family, and he wanted to, uh, something to be, um, he, he's an extremely innovative person. He's really, I must say, rather ingenious. He sat there on napkins and created sculptures faster than, <laughs> I, can, faster than I can hand him napkins. Finally, he went to the men's room and I told his wife, couldn't he please allow me some latitude to come up with my own idea? So she talked to him when he came back and he just shrugged his shoulders and said, okay. Who's the artist yeah, here? Exactly. Oh. So he, I, 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 I told him I saw the things that he liked and I'll work within that genre. And a, a couple of weeks later, I sent him some concepts, some photographs of some clay designs like these like these representational clay designs. I right. sent him these, these modern designs, and um, he selected this one. So I hope to, be, I hope to have um, this out of my studio within about the next two weeks, because I need to get paid, and I've tried his patience <laughs> long enough. <laughs> That's amazing. And now when you deliver this, do you deliver and install the piece also? Uh -huh. So you have to travel to Texas. I, I will, but we're looking forward to that. That'll be fun. In fact, I said, part of the deal, I said, will you pay for the expensive? And he says, yeah. He says, how are you going to get it here? And he, I said, I'll put it on the flatbed and we'll just tow it there. And he said, okay. But I didn't realize it was going to weigh a ton. That's not all that much. <laughs> Is it a ton? It'll, it's, I think it's about 2,000 pounds. Oh. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's very heavy at the base particularly. 
It's spectacular. Mm -hmm. Is it all going to be polished like well, this? Well, uh, such a good question. Thank you, because I might have forgotten to mention <laughs> the fact that in, it, actually it's going to be painted. I won't, I won't paint oh. it myself, but part of the deal was is he wanted um, primary colors. In fact, he, the, he just moved from a house, and inside of that house was primary colors everywhere. Wow. And um, so this will be primary blue, primary yellow, primary red. And this represents his son. This represents his wife. This represents Philip Romano himself. And I took um, footprints in a hotel in San Francisco that, that day that, that I mentioned earlier that we're having supper. And I took footprints in, in, of all three of them, himself and his wife and, and uh, his boy. So what I'm going to do is incorporate those organic footprints around the sculpture in the grass, because this will be subterranean all the way up to this point here, and okay. the rest will go down in, in, the, in the earth. There's enough room here, about a foot, for grass to grow, and I'll have little footprints. So the footprints will be primary blue for the boy, yellow for her, and red for him. Okay. So there'll just be these foot, organic footprints around the sculpture actually tie it to what yeah, it's representing. Exactly. Great. I like that. Absolutely. A little more a little more nature based as uh -huh. compared to the modern. Exactly. It's very cool. Thank you, Julie. I like the metal though personally, but hey. <laughs> you know, me too. I like In fact, that. B before I ever really paint it, I'm going to uh, tell him, "Won't you please come here and make sure that you actually want to paint this?" And if he comes, and then which he may, he's been here before, that because I made him a couple of fairly large marble sculptures, um, then he can decide. But I have a feeling, I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, it has to be protected. So I really would like to sand the whole thing down and let it get a rust, get to a, a, a state of, of even rust, and then stop the, the rust mm -hmm. and urethane it. Natural. That's what I'd like to natural, exactly. That would look awesome. Uh huh. Oh, but, tasteful you. Yes. I think. And while you're at it, ask him when do we get a macaroni grill? <laughs> 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 okay, well, behind this sculpture are a lot of other pieces. We're going to make a move back to the rest of the gallery studio and see what we see back here. Okay. Okay, now we have some smaller pieces to look at. We'll start with this charming couple. Mm -hmm. These are all, this one will be probably half life size. The, what we're going to be looking at now is a group of three sculptures all for one facility, the Warren E. Thornton Youth Facility oh. in Sacramento. Okay. Uh huh. And that was a competition that I engaged in about two summers ago, and I was very surprised to, to get that job. And it's a good job, biggest ever for me. Good for you. So I'm really excited about it. And I went in front of their, uh, the Board of Supervisors, and they were so nice. It was a big, uh, great and exciting day. And I tell, told them that this piece was going to be half life size, and they asked me, why is that going to be half life size? Did you run out of clay? And I said, actually, <laughs> you ra we ran out of money. So they said, well, well, maybe we'll find the funds to make it life size after all, but oh. we'll see. That was before the great budget crisis and et cetera. So I don't know. And it's okay with me if it, is, if it remains half size. But it's, when I made all of these concepts, and I listened very carefully to the staff at the Warren E. Thornton Youth Facility, and this is a facility for children, both boys and girls, who are under 16 years old, who have had some some problems, and it's the the uh, authorities have thought it best that they not be at home for a while, and so this is a somewhat of a correctional facility. But obviously, they they are well thought of, or they we wouldn't be going through all this trouble for these children. And I've toured the facility, and I and they're really some very interesting people. I personally think that there's a lot of wonderful energy there. That's good. Well, and you're adding to that with these sculptures, obviously. They said to me that, Philip, <clears throat> what we'd like to accomplish when you're finished is we would like to point to these sculptures and ask the children, what do you think they mean? So to me, they're like um, icons that you might see in a Catholic church that of statues, and all of these statues in Catholic churches mean something to Catholics. So what did the, what's going on here? Well, this is when this happened. 
Here we have a, a, um, a staff member instructing a girl who's getting ready to plant an oak. And I think the metaphor is clear there. And so that's what's going on there. And here we have um, another staff member lecturing to the children. And so he can be saying so many different things. So the children are sitting around listening attentively. And at first I made them all Caucasian. And then I had to go back and made them ethnically diverse. So here, here is an African American, an Asian girl, and here would be a Caucasian boy. And this fellow will probably be somewhat Hispanic. So that's that. Very and then good. here we have this piece. This is probably, I think, um, uh, the front runner for the, for the job, although when I made these sculptures, I struggled hard, like raising children not to show any favorites. And I have three children, and it, was, it's, um, um, it's not a, it wasn't difficult to love them all the same at all. But <clears throat> it was a little difficult to, to d dedicate and devote the same energy to all three. But it, it would appear that this one is their favorite. And here we have a boy sitting at a basketball and a staff member. And one day when I visited the facility, I noticed the, the young men playing basketball. And I saw myself at such a place, and I nearly went to one when I was that age. And I saw myself out there playing basketball and getting terribly excited about what I was doing and having a good time and a rapport with all of my friends. And then all of a sudden the game's over and it, it instantly dawns on me where I am. And I said, oh man. Oh. And I sit down on my basketball because I know I'm going to be watched and supervised there back you know. into the facility. So I, yes, please turn it. Turn and see uh -huh. the basketball. So the boy is sitting there on a basketball. Go. And, and, and he's thinking, what have I, how, what, how has my life developed? What have I gotten myself into? And the staff member notices this, having seen it before, and says, don't worry, we can get through this together. And in fact, um, when, I, when I said the, practically the same words, the staff members more than once said, we do go through this on a regular basis. So this one will be out in front of the facility in the grass where the, the other two will go in courtyards there at the facility. Okay. So that's what's going on here. And this is, this is a black man, African-American, and this will be probably um, a Hispanic youth. So I think I'm going to make him a little bit of an Elvis Presley type Hispanic. I think, oh, there we go. Uh, mm -hmm. Get the hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Now I want to back up for a minute. We, we passed this beautiful oh. romantic couple. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, this, this was one of the concepts that I made for Ron and Marianne Dreisbach of the piece that, that I showed you earlier, okay. the piece that they did choose. But they, they thought that this looked too much like a dance routine, and my wife consistently told me the same thing, but I wanted to do it anyway. I just got into it. And um, so th this was one of the concepts for, uh, for the Dreisbach sculpture, but one they did not choose, but I like it anyway. I like it. It kind of reminds me like when we were young or something like that. That's thoughts that, Thoughts that are starting to dawn on me these days. <laughs> A long time ago <laughs> when we were young. It does look like sort of their dancing. He's mm -hmm. sweeping uh -huh. her off her feet. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like it. Now, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. What have we here? Well, this, 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 is a, <laughs> this is a marble concept. It's been here for a long time. And uh, Tom Head, if you see, see, see this program, this, this is ultimately for you. And uh, we'll, it's, it's the, the concept of, uh, mm, there's, this will be, this is cloth here, swirling. This would be her tor a torso. And just, just barely, you might be able to figure out that this, is, this will be an emerging head. So it is kind of a dream mm. concept of a woman just f falling asleep in the sea and kind of a metamorphosis or maybe a lovely lady being born out of water. Maybe like Venus was born f mature from the ocean. Beautiful. And this is marble? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's this classic Italian marble. I don't know if you can get the sparkle on that. It's mm -hmm. really pretty stone. So this is still a work in progress? Yes, it is. We're uh -huh. still playing. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank okay. You, Julie. Now, what would you like to tell us well, about? Well, right behind you would be <coughs> would be this. 
I don't know if the camera can show them both together or not, but this is the armature, the, uh, the understructure for, the, um, for, the, for this concept. So it's the understructure for this piece. I and see. my okay. son and even you, Julie, mentioned earlier that, that you, you kind of liked it this way. And so now I'm worried whether I'm going to mess it up <laughs> by putting clay on it. Cover it up. Cover, huh? I'm going to cover it all up. And, and ultimately, it'll look like this piece. And then um, when it's completely made in clay, then a mold will, will cover it. And a, the, the impression will be taken of it. And we'll soon see what that results in. And a, a bronze casting will be made. And then this will be uh, uh, too delicate to be a work of art, destroyed, really in the clay version because the mold making takes a toll on, 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 the, on the, the original clay. And so probably what I'll do, since it's so tough, is I'll probably pressure wash all the clay off of it and I'll put it across my road, maybe make a sculpture garden. Lovely. How do you bend this wire around? It's fairly flexible wire. Uh -huh. it's, it's fairly flexible, and, I, and in some cases I heated the metal, but in most cases I could just bend it with my hands. But time, and you know what, yesterday I said, well, I, this, I, this place is so crowded. I said, I think I brought this little, this little cart out and put it outside. And I said, oh no, bring the, speaking to myself, I said, bring the cart back in and put the sculpture on it, because I will be working on this on top of that cart. But really, the sculpture is me meant to be seen from, the, from a lower view. And I liked it better lower, but it's hard to move physically. And then by the time I had help with the, with the, cr the film crew, etc., there were already electric cords and so forth on the way, so I just left it on this cart. And it, it, uh, the, I think the nuance of body language is what, would, what presents the difficulty. The, because with an armature, it's it's hard, and it won't be it won't it won't move easy. So if I start laying clay on it and it doesn't look quite right, it will be extremely difficult to change the armature. And that really is the big deal with fixed armatures to make it so that it's always beneath what I what I want to, uh, the the sculpture ultimately to, uh, to look like. So otherwise, there'll be things protruding metal parts protruding through. And this was not going to be forgiving. So mm -hmm. I needed to make it very close. So it's got that nuance of, of body language that I, that I hope that you saw in this piece. And you know, I think it does. I've, I've had it here for more than, a, um, more than a month now, and I've had an opportunity to study it, and I'm pretty comfortable with it. So I think it's going to work out all right. Great, that is amazing. It's good to see how it starts out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, speaking of that, you have a mold you're going to show us? Well, I don't have the mold here. I left the mold in, in Southern California for Irene. And this okay. is Irene, my little fountain girl. And um, th this was, this was a, a, a inspired, and I hope you'll go see it if you haven't seen it already, by a very beautiful sculpture in front of Rideout Hospital down yes. in Yuba City. She's a lovely thing. And, you know, we speak of not having a lot of art in our community. Well, that's a, that is a very worthwhile piece of art. I must say, I don't like the other two pieces in the, in the inner courtyard there. I, perhaps <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But I'm comfortable in saying it because I can praise the other piece so much. It's just an exquisite girl, so such a delightful piece. She's beautiful, mm -hmm. yes. And my client visited Rideout Hospital many times before his beloved Irene passed away, and she fell in love with that sculpture. So he called me to his home, and I thought I was going to have to say no because I thought he was going to be asking me for a headstone, like so many people do. <laughs> and I don't do headstones. So... But he didn't. He, asked, he said, do you know that sculpture down in front of Ryan? I said, oh, yes, it's a beautiful piece. And he said, I'd like you to make something like it in your own way. So I did. And this is my rendition of that. And I knew it would be a hard act to follow because I like that piece. But this is my rendition. There already exists a masonry uh, fountain, oh, probably 
about uh, the diameter of a barrel with an even greater outside diameter of which this base would represent the missing stone that, that, uh, that will go in probably tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cement this into place and there's plumbing in, in, up through this leg and out through her arm and water will be running over her hands and overflowing down into the fountain. Beautiful. So this She's is beautiful. Thank you. Now, is that the original form of Irene? Well, you know, it's not the original. It's it, but it's more. It's it's an earlier, an earlier part of the process than than the the Irene that you just saw. Well, I asked the foundry when they produced this piece for me, and I brought them down my, my clay version, of which they made the mold. Previously, I've made molds. I don't really like making molds. It's a laborious, tedious process, but it's like anything else when, um, that's like that. When I'm done with it, if I've done a good job, I'm proud of it. But they made the mold, and, and, I, and I wasn't able to, to go and oversee the process. So to be sure that, uh, that I like the rendition that I got, that is the, the, the cleaning up of the piece, the grinding of the welds, which hasn't been done in this case. I, I had another one made to be on the safe side, so in case I had to, 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 to finish the piece from a casting, that I would have one to do so. Plus, I want her in my studio to keep me company. And here, so here she is, but you know what? I think that I may have sold this already. Mm. So I'll have to clean her up, or maybe <laughs> I'll just send it right back where she came from and have them Let do it, them all, do over, it. Do all over again. Now we have another situation here. With Is this now a mold uh, and then the, the finished? Th th this would be the same as the Irene we just looked at, a, oh, raw, okay. a raw casting. You know, I don't have any molds to show you that are right here handy, but this is a raw casting straight straight from the, from the, 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 the welding process. Okay. And so this is, and here we have a finished piece. Beautiful. This is modern. And whereas the, what we've been looking at is more representational. And the Romano piece is downright extremely abstract. So we've gone from, oh, A to Z in a sense. Although art has no parameters. It just anything goes. That is gorgeous. Can you turn that for us and let us... This, this piece? Yeah. yeah I'll sure. hang on to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay. That is gorgeous. This is... I've sold a few of these. This is, this is called Twin Flames. Beautiful. And so you see how the patina, the artificial coloration, turns kind of red at the top. Well, that is supposed to represent a, a, a flame. So it's bluish and yellow and red. And this is, a, this is one f a female from emerging from one tongue of fire. The male emerging from another tongue of fire. Beautiful. Coalescing and bonding together in the perfect relationship. And my client, Cynthia McKay in Sacramento, sent me a tape. Of, of a person, a spiritual leader that she pays a lot of attention to and told me to interpret the tape of, of what the meaning of a twin flame is. So this is my rendition of a perfect relationship. Well, now you know. There's the model. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I love that concept. Thank you. Unfortunately, Philip, we're out of time. Oh my. We haven't even seen everything that's here in the studio, but that means we'll have to come back another time. I look forward to Could that. Could you please tell people how to get a hold of you? Come to my website. That would be philipshortino.com with one, Philip with one L, S-C-I-O-R-T-I-N-O. And also sculpture-ps.com is another website. Very good, okay. It has been a pleasure being with you today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for sharing. And thank all of you for joining us. We will see you again next time on Artists Alive.